So I pronounced Jay Berwinger's name like five different ways in this video. My bad. As the 2020 crazy NCAA season ends with Devontae Smith from Alabama winning the 2020 Heisman Trophy, we take a look back at the first Heisman Trophy winner from his beginnings at Dubuque, Iowa, all the way to the Big Ten's University of Chicago Maroons football team. He was the first selection of the 1936 NFL Draft, which was the first NFL Draft ever, as well as the first Heisman Trophy winner, though it was called the Downtown Athletic Club Trophy at that time. It was renamed the Heisman Trophy the next year. John Jacob Beringer was born in 1914. He attended Dubuque High and excelled at wrestling, track, and football. He was an all-state halfback and was recruited by Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, and Purdue. He opted for the University of Chicago, which at the time was in the Big Ten. The University of Chicago offered him a $300 tuition scholarship, which in 2021 would be about $5,800 today. Now, Behringer played in a completely different era of football. This was before the offense and defense was divided into two different squads, and he was renowned for his versatility. He controlled every aspect uh, of that team. He called the plays, ran, passed, punted, blocked, tackled. He did kickoffs, kicked extra points, and he also returned punts and kickoffs. With this versatility, he earned multiple nicknames such as Genius of the Gridiron, the One Man Team, the Flying Dutchman, uh, as well as the Man in the Iron Mask because he wore a special face guard to protect him as his nose was broken twice uh, previously in his playing career. While at the University of Chicago, Behringer and the, and the Maroons never had a winning season. They finished about 500 every single year he was there. He was part of the University of Chicago's teams uh, towards the end of their tenure in the Big Ten, as four years after he left, uh, the University of Chicago dropped out of the Big Ten for football. And then about five years later, they dropped out of the Big Ten altogether. In his Heisman Trophy season, the University of Chicago finished with a 4-4 four and four record, 2-3 and three versus Big Ten opponents, and finished 6th place in the Big Ten, ahead of Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Their four wins that year was against Carroll, Western State in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Illinois, though they did lose a very close game against the Ohio State team in Chicago. The Chicago Tribune also awarded Behringer the silver football for the most valuable player in the Big Ten in 1935. He was also the captain of the University of Chicago track team, senior class president, and head of his uh, fraternity, uh, Psi Epsilon. And on a side note, he was actually the only Heisman Trophy winner ever to be tackled by future president Gerald Ford in 1934 when Gerald Ford played for the University of Michigan. In the early days of football, stats really were not kept track of. And because of this, we really don't exactly know uh, all of uh, Jay Behringer's uh, stats. But from best calculations, uh, it says in his career, he rushed for about 1,800 yards on 439 carries and averaged 4.2 yards per rush with 22 touchdowns. He also kicked 20 extra points and completed 50 of 146 passes for 921 yards. He also averaged 46.3 yards on 34 kickoffs and 38 yards on 233 punts. In 1936, the Philadelphia Eagles drafted Jay Behringer, but they quickly realized that they would not be able to meet Jay Behringer's demands for salary. The Eagles then traded his rights to the Chicago Bears for tackle Art Buss. This is when things start to go a little bit sideways uh, for Jay and his professional football career. Back in the 1930s, the NFL salaries weren't as big as they were today. For top players, they could easily make about $5,000 a year, but for the average player, They'd only make about $950 a year, which doesn't sound like a whole bunch right now. 
But that was anywhere between $18,000 and $95,000 today. When he sat down with the Bears and they were asking how much he wanted, he asked for $25,000 over two years, which in today's money is about $200,000 a year, which is still very good money to play a game back in 1936. After working back and forth, the Bears' final offer to Jay was thirteen five, which is about $250,000 today. And he decided that ju that just was not enough, and he set his sights on something else. A berth on the U.S. National Track Team. A year after rejecting the Bears, Jay Beringer actually asked a few newspapers if they would ask the Bears if they would still honor the thirteen five that they had offered him the year before, but the Bears said no. In today's NFL, Jay would have had no issues finding a new team to take over his contract. At the end of the day, Jay Beringer just never really wanted to play professional sports. He said in an interview uh, right after his 1935 season is, I haven't decided what to do. I may play professional football next fall because of its practical advantages. I might take a coaching job. Although it is my ultimate intention to enter business in preference to making a career in professional athletics. For the time being, I'm mainly interested in finishing my courses at Chicago, graduating next June, and trying to win a place on the Olympic team. This sounds a lot like Jay just did not want to play professional football and had his mind on other things. Back in 1936, the NFL really wasn't the be-all. Most players didn't move on to the NFL. Even the top ones, as we say, see Jay Beringer, the first Heisman Trophy winner, deciding to take a job as a foam rubber salesman. After the deal with the Bears didn't work out, he actually worked a few jobs. He was actually a sports writer in Chicago, as well as a manufacturer of plastic car parts. He also had a short-lived acting career, playing himself in the 1936 film The Big Game. In World War II, he enrolled in the Navy's flight training program and became a naval officer. In 1954, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, and in 1989, he was included in the Sports Illustrated's 25th Anniversary All-American Team, which honored players whose accomplishments extended beyond the football field. Jay Beringer passed away in 2002 after a battle with lung cancer, but his spirit lives on not only in the Heisman Trophy that is now displayed in the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame, but also in the statue that is right outside the University of Chicago's football field, in a pose made famous by the Heisman Trophy, but not based on him. The debate will live on. How good would have Jay been in the NFL? Would his name be beside Jim Thorpe or Red Grange? Or would he be as today? known only for college football and being the first Heisman Trophy winner and the first NFL pick, as well as one of the first college football players to say no to the NFL. Let me know down below. Would we still be talking about him as we do Jim Thorpe, or would he not have been able to compete with the NFL players and stay haunting the Heisman house? So Herschel, I understand you live in the Heisman house with the spirit of the first Heisman winner, uh, Jay Burwinger? Wanger, Jay Burwanger, the greatest Heisman winner of all time. Really? Absolutely, 100%. Jay won the trophy, what, in 1935? So he's better than... He's the greatest. Roger Staubach, Archie Griffin, Barry Sanders, uh, Frank Sinkwich. Listen, Jay Burwanger is the greatest Heisman winner of all time. The game is totally different now. It's so much faster. No, 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 it isn't. Did they even have the forward pass back then? Take it easy now, Jay. She's new. She's new. That's it. That's it. You want to start this thing over now? So, Herschel, you live with the spirit of Jay Berwanger, the greatest Heisman winner of all time. That's right. The greatest ever. 
Nobody's better than him.